Hello, it's Alex Smith here from Artisan Surveyors. Um, I'm at Chatham Dockyard in Kent with Ray and Mavis Nye. Um, we're here to uh, talk about the, all the fantastic work that Ray and Mavis are doing to uh, campaign for asbestos awareness and particularly for uh, awareness of uh, asbestos diseases and the asbestos specific um, cancer mesothelioma. So um, Ray and Mavis, thank you for coming down, taking the time to come and meet me, to meet me here. Um, it's, it's great to meet you. I've uh, sort of, you know, been following uh, all the, uh, the great work you're doing on online and on your blog uh, and on, um, on social media and Facebook and sort of, yeah, the, the campaign that you're doing. So um, you tell, tell us a little bit about your your story, your journey, kind of what's brought you, why, why we've particularly chosen Chatham Dockyard uh, sort of to, to come here to uh, today, uh, and um, why you're you're doing your your, your campaigns. Okay, it's um, really where it all started when um, I met Ray in 1957, and I he brought home the Asbestos even them days. Uh, he used to meet me at dinner times, and it was all on his jacket and on his clothes because they didn't have protection in them days. They just used to come home. And, and all the dust was there. And um, where did he pick that up from? If you could, yeah, where, whereabouts did he work? That he, uh, on board he the ships, really. Yeah, yeah, which was here, wasn't it? Yeah. At, uh, at, at, at Chatham yeah, Dockyard. Those yeah. ships were full of asbestos, and he, had, he was working amongst it all while they were drilling, pitting, whatever. Uh, and so it's all a dusty, dirty area. You don't realise how dirty it was. And so um, we married, and we had a we carried on, I did his washing, of course, in my old washing machine there, and um, we didn't know the dangers, we just carried on and I brought the children up. <clears throat> and so, um, we married in 1960, and uh, we, we just had a normal life. We brought the children up, we, we worked, we went on holidays, we, we carried on. Life was normal, I never knew I had a cancer growing inside of me, but I did because it was there for 48 years. So you can imagine that was my whole lifespan really because when we came to 2000, the year 2000, and I retired, we bought a motor home, we bought a park home and because we, we sold the house. We moved down to Whitstable from Chatham and uh, we decided to go abroad. We, that's, that was what we were going to do, that was our life. From there on we thought, Got all these plans we made and so uh, we went abroad we because my son was living over there and uh, for two months we had a lovely time and I but I was noticing at Benidorm the summers in Lanusia and each day that we walked down to Benidorm was all right but coming back I noticed that more and more I couldn't handle the hill and so I was stopping on a wall and that was getting lower and lower and I we really don't know. How long ago was that? That was in two, 2009. Okay. And, uh, that, but we got home, and by the time I got home, I just could not breathe. And one, um, I went to boat and I couldn't breathe at all, but I'd already been to the doctors and we'd already had an x ray. And he said to me, he, he phoned up that same day that I was really in trouble, funny enough, it, it was meant to be. And he said, get yourself up to the A&E, there's a bed being booked. Uh, we found an enormous mass in your lung. And he said that over the phone, which is so unusual, but he was so worried. Yeah. And I was booked in and they drained seven litres of fluid. Oh. Well, from that fluid, they, they, bring, uh, they have a culture uh, and they grow it. And mesothelioma was diagnosed at that point. And yeah. The surgeon come to my bed, he said, you've got three months to live, go home, put your affairs in order. Um, and that's it. So I went home and chucked all my clothes out because I said, oh well, I said, that's it. Oh, you've got cancer, I won't need my clothes. I, I bought him all new stuff. I bought uh, blinds because I said he'd never wash curtains without oh. me. I really got very practical about it. And, uh, but, you know. Um, nine years later. It yeah, is. nine years later because of four years of chemo and I got so toxic and uh, I was back at death's door again. Um, I was on a walking frame and uh, I, I couldn't do any housework, Ray was doing everything. And I, uh, a 
Dean Fennell said to me, get yourself down to the Royal Marsden. He said, there's a trial there and I think you'll be okay for it. He said, um, so I went down there and I took the last place because they were testing 40, sorry, 25 ca cancers and only mesothelioma had only three places okay. uh, because I was just going to try it to see what happened. And they couldn't believe what happened that I actually, in two years of the trial um, of immunotherapy, uh, it, it sort of went right down and it was kind of, it, well, I had complete response. Yeah, actually completely straight yeah. to clear it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it was Which would brilliant. have been the first case of, of clearing mesothelioma. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, it's so that's great. So it's, it's good that, yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? That it's, sort of he, it's heading the right way and yeah, you're really it. helping pioneer. It, the, it gave the doctors hope that, that yeah. well, come on, we can, we might as well carry on with treating and let's carry on with research. It's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it never worked before, they just could not get hold of it. Well, it's been very difficult with immunotherapy to actually, all the other people that have been on the trials, the variations in results are so different, so they're realising it was down to DNA, or there's something in my body, but they don't know what, that has responded so well. So um, I have offered my uh, DNA, they're looking at my DNA now, oh, okay. from, from um, 2009 biop, to, and then I've just had another one because it has started to grow again, uh, but it's all new growth, and it wasn't any of the old growth. So they want to know what's different about this new growth that it escaped the immunotherapy because yeah. it should still be working. And you've just started a new course of the same I have. thing. I've control. been allowed the same, and I can have it for a year. So I'm very grateful for that, and we'll go again. Yeah. You yeah. Can, uh, yeah. Find it. Well, no, you know, it's fantastic. You're doing sort of so well to stay positive and uh, and sort of you know do, doing all all of this yourself to, to to kind of work work with them on the trials and sort of really help kind of pioneer that and also give hope to um, the other people that you work with through your foundation that have got mesothelioma and their their families and yeah. uh, and helping. Well, all the them meso well. warriors are on Facebook and uh, we're all there together. So tell us a bit about your, so that's your, uh, you've got obviously your Meso Warriors and you've got your foundation as well, so tell us a bit about, about that and the foundation yeah. and where people can find that information. Well, I uh, actually um, uh, started the, the Meso Warriors side with um, some of the Meso Warriors, but Debbie Brewer was the main one there and uh, she's since, she has since died. But, you know, she said to me, carry on Mavis and keep going with it and I, it's growing. It's grown such a huge amount. So many people are finding me. How many hits have you, uh, we worked it out? About 14,000 hits a week. Wow. You know, so uh, it's helping a lot. I've, what I'm finding too, though, is a lot of young people now. And they're in, as young as 19. I had two 19 year olds contact me. So. And do they tend to be peritoneal? Means peritoneal. Rather than lung. Yes, they do. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so the difference in that is you've got the far most common um, form of mesothelioma is, uh, is the, uh, of the flora of the lung lining, um, but then a much more rare case is of the stomach and the guts uh, lining peritoneal mesothelioma, which would be from uh, ingestion of uh, asbestos fibres rather than breathing it in. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so you're finding that there's more young people now that are, uh, yeah. speaking of young people, it's about to, uh, about to have some go past. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. they're all uh, uh, safe from asbestos and uh, yeah. Yeah, being kept safe, kept safe at uh, a school, which we're actually going to uh, sort of go on to talk a little bit about as well, aren't we? Uh, That's right. Yeah. Shortly, so. so yeah, I find there, there's a lot, very, lot of young ones that, that maybe started looking at asbestos in schools, really, and worrying about why they got it, uh, because they're in old buildings, and this is the thing, it is in old buildings. Um, so every... every parent really should ask at their school to see the asbestos register. They should know that if there is asbestos in their school, don't panic. Yeah, yeah. So it, it can save as long as it's not touched because children touch. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, exactly. It's, it's just awareness, isn't it? Yeah. And knowing both for the parents, the teachers, and yeah. sort of really everyone knowing where it is, then that it's being managed exactly. properly, it's in good condition. So. They would, if they look at the register, they would then be sure that, that it was being managed properly. Yes. And that's what we need, more awareness and, and more managed asbestos. Um, that's why I totally believe that every householder should have a survey carried out, whether it's at the selling point or the buying point, 
They should have it. They should know where it is so they can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Know where it is and, and make sure it's safe. Have a, have the surveyor give you the report and you'll know whether it's safe. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously all the legislation is really kind of geared towards commercial property, isn't yes. it? Yes, So it I think a lot of people think that it's only really commercial buildings exactly. that it's in. But, of course, yeah. say that, you know, any houses that yeah. were built pre-2000 can still... Still have asbestos in, and it was yeah. used in so many different materials, or over 3,000 different products and materials. So, there's so many places that it can be found in yeah. vinyl floor tiles, bitumen yeah. products, felts, um, yeah. Artex, yeah. rope, yeah. cement yeah. sheets, asbestos insulation boards. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of products in lots of different areas um, with, yeah, within residential houses as well. Um, unfortunately, we are finding. Um, more and more that people are approaching us to, to ask about surveys and testing within residential properties, either that they live in and they're going to do some work or, uh, yeah. or that they're buying. Good. So it's, it seems to be moving in the Good. right direction, but yeah. there definitely seems to be a lot to be done for, for raising awareness, yeah. still in the importance of managing asbestos and not disturbing it as part of refurb works or um, yeah, if, it's, if, it, if it's just in bad condition anyway. Um, also, the mortgage companies now are they're gradually, they're not given a mortgage until they've got a survey. Starting to happen, isn't oh, it? That's so, really, yeah, that's great. It's, it's moving the right way. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, yes, yeah, so that's great with your, um, obviously, so, your, yeah. your, your, your sort of reason for, 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 for doing it is, is, is kind of obviously your, your background. Um, uh, yeah. Well, your continued fight, you know, to, to, to sort of battle um, and, and work with it, and, and that's great. So. And then I met up with a lawyer uh, of Moore Blatch, um, Trevor Sterling, and he d he um, ra raised money for the statue to be outside St Thomas's of Mary Seacole. Yeah. And so, and all the grounds being done, and uh, he sort of saw me as modern day Mary Seacole, and uh, he said, I, "I would love to talk to you." And I said, well, I'm in the Royal Mars and come down and talk to me any time. And so uh, we made this arrangement and he uh, phoned me and said, well, we're here. And I said, all right. And he expected this little old lady to come out all ill. He said, and she bounced out <laughs> <laughs> because I've always kept a sense of humor about it. And, uh, and now that I'm on immunotherapy, I feel well. It, 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 I think the, uh, yeah, it does. the power of the mind and yeah. positivity, I think, that's, is that's a it. wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, to, that's to help, it. I think, people that if you just yeah. give up and then I think if yeah. you think, right, I'm going to gonna fight this, then uh, that's it. Yeah, that's gonna uh, and he told, the me for then, you. he told me to use my name and uh, he said, why don't you start a foundation, use your name and, uh, and put that to research and things. So that's what we did. We drew together a plan and um, my foundation passed the charity commission in no time over a weekend and it was just brilliant yeah and it went right through and uh, that's what we're doing we're raising money um, lucky enough I've got young people like you <laughs> <laughs> on, on my board Facebook and LinkedIn and they're giving generously some of these companies they really are doing nice and uh, they can see that you know we do need more money for research yeah uh, so let's go for it yeah, absolutely. Spread as much awareness as yeah, we can. So yeah, no, yeah, anyone watching this, please, uh, <laughs> yeah. please do just share this video to just help help, help us raise uh, as much awareness as we can about asbestos asbestos diseases and what what Mavis and, uh, and Ray are, uh, are doing as part of uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. part of the foundation and, yeah. and the research yeah. uh, behind yeah, curing mesothelioma and, uh, and asbestos yeah. And you can find diseases. me. All you've got to do really is Google Mavis Nye. Yes. But it's Mavis Knight Foundation and on there is a donation page and I would be so grateful if you could sort of put some donations in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. But so yeah, please sh share this, uh, well, uh, ask for donations and, and, and if you can donate then it's non -profit much appreciated. Making, and I keep being told off because I will, won't even take anything for myself and my um, expenses, expenses <laughs> because I can't see the point. In, it's a place where I put my money. So what's the point of me then taking it out for expenses? So, oh, so I kind of uh, still give it to it. All going to the cause, yeah, and, you know, it, every you penny know. is used for exactly. For good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 great. So yeah, I think that part of the yeah, special awareness keep you know everything you're doing is, is fantastic, and I'll do everything that I can as well to work with you and uh, yeah. you know.
can keep sharing that and the videos that, 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 that I do as part of the, on the surveying side of things and helping yeah. to so do, do videos to, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. met and so it's just to help sort of show people where, where asbestos can be found yeah. and, and, and likely places yeah. within buildings, so both for people that might have mesothelioma that want to find out more about where they could have been exposed and then also hopefully help help in going some way towards prevent future exposures Definitely. from from others and just general yeah. awareness and the importance of, uh, of of learning about asbestos asbestos materials the risks yeah, uh, yeah. that's right yeah yeah so because even the young lads in the industry i've got in with those because um i want to keep them safe and they started sending me photos of that when on survey or in when they're working because they would get sacked if they showed them. Yeah. And so I'm able to, I picked it up and um, I talk about the dangers because I can see it in these photographs that they send me, you know, it's too, too much has been, it's la very lapsed in, at, at times and they do take a lot of risk and even like they can't understand why they have to shave uh, to get the proper fit. Yeah. But they can't, you know, it, it just takes one fibre just keep yourself safe. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, yeah. Every fiber is sort of increases. It does worry me. Increases risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, what's your uh, what are your plans then, sort of, for the future, moving forward with uh, well, kind of the campaigns and the you know the awareness? It's mainly schools. Yes, I do keep on about schools and campaign for schools. And Ray's done me a lovely video there for about the children and the message to the parents. So that's on yeah. our on our web page. And. Um, and keep talking, keep raising the awareness. Be while I'm here, this is a, a person that's got mesothelioma. I know what it's about, and I don't want anybody else to suffer this way. But also, I want, I never had any uh, information. I came home and Googled when I was told my diagnosis, yeah. and that, that's horrendous. So I started gathering information, and that's, I gather and gather it. and. I want to share it. Well, I can see from your groups how, you know, exactly. Facebook groups, how that helps people, all of the, the questions that yeah. have just found out they've got it and what yeah. they can ask and just that support from yeah. yourself and, and, and other right. people. Of, you and know, I'm there, that 24 commu hours, community, I'm, I'm there. They can wake me up in the middle of the night, I don't care, I leave the computer on. But yeah, I, someone might need information in the night, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, know, you don't get from me a message saying, um, uh, I'm not on my... Uh, what do they say? I'm not on my yeah. desk at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. She is. Always available. <laughs> yeah, I just like to be always available. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I've got a little growing team of uh, MISO warriors that are taking over. So, like today, that I'm here, but they are uh, adding, they're answering, and, and they're carrying on. So, they've yeah. got a lovely little group coming forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Ray's heavily involved with oh, helping oh, you. Oh, Ray, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have done half of what I've done, it. apart from all the driving he does <laughs> and the travelling on trains with me. Um, it, he's there doing um, anything on the computer for me because it's surprised that I'm, I'm, I don't know everything. It looks like I do. <laughs> I don't. Do really well. <laughs> Between you, yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I usually. Uh, getting ready for bed and she would say can you do this video for me so you'll do it tomorrow no I want it now <laughs> you know it's never in the middle of the day when I'm wide awake quite capable no it's got to be when I'm just nodding <laughs> and, I'm enough, and she wants it now keeping you on your toes <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah but that's it I'm there whatever she needs and she says that's what I pay you for <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. well that's great well um yeah no so, so thank you for taking the time to uh, yeah, been, meet me here yeah, no, and, it's uh, been brilliant thank you very much because now his story is all down on tape so yeah, it's brilliant 